So I've been using Windows 10 on ARM for the last few weeks, and today I'll share with you seven things I love about it and three things I don't. Stay tuned. All right, let's start with the good things. Number one, all day battery life. So there's been a lot of hype around Windows 10 and ARM and getting exorbitant amount of hours for battery. Is it true? It is. Now this device here, the NVX2 is supposed to get 22 hours. And while it doesn't quite get that, 14 to 15 hours is totally legit. In fact, from my experience, we're talking about one and a half times the average battery life of an Intel chip. And that's really good. Over the long run, you're going to get a lot more power out of this. Don't forget, in standby, you also don't drain battery. So that is absolutely a fact, and it's fantastic. All right, number two, instant on. So Windows 10 on ARM performs just like a smartphone, and that means this device never actually goes to sleep. That ability, though, to have this device come on at any time is really amazing. I can let this device go a week or a month and just click it on, and it's just like an iPad. It's always there. All right, number three, always on microphones. Because of that standby stuff and the far field microphones on this device, you can call up Cortana at any time. You can even leave the device folded up and in your bag and still call it out and it works. It's pretty cool for checking up on your latest meetings, checking the weather, or doing all the other cool features that Cortana has. Not realizing everybody uses Cortana, but still I do. And that's a pretty neat feature to have, especially if you're an ex Windows phone user who is used to that performance and ability. All right, number four, no fan. So this device doesn't have a fan on it and doesn't get very warm at all. Now, technically we have some Intel devices that have that too, and that's pretty welcome. But anytime you have perfectly quiet computing that doesn't get hot, well, I'm a big fan of that. And you get that with this device and when it's set on ARM. All right, number five, I'm gonna say it, performance. I know, it's shocking, right? But if you stick to Windows Store apps, this actually runs very well. It's similar to an Intel Core i3 processor. I really wanna stress this. I think a lot of people think this is like running Intel Atom. I've run Atom, this is not Atom. Now I've had Surface 3 and why I love that device, I want to hurl it through the window at times, I've never felt like that with this device. Now, if you're gonna run apps outside the store or some high level games, that's a different story. But if you stick to UWP apps from the store, it's actually a very good experience. Number six, ultra thin and light. So there are a lot of thin PCs on the market today that are running Intel processors, but nothing's quite as thin as this. That's all due to the Windows 10 on ARM because the Snapdragon 835 requires very little space. So if you don't like lugging around a giant computer and still want all day battery life, this is your best bet. All right, and number seven, new form factor. So, so far, all we've seen are the familiar two-in-one design, as well as the Nova Go's traditional clamshell laptop. But there's a lot more opportunity here for OEMs. And when I spoke to Qualcomm, they were very bullish on other manufacturers jumping in here and creating all sorts of new devices. So yeah, maybe there'll be an eight-inch tablet or something that folds. We just have to wait and see. There's a lot of opportunity here. In fact, some phone manufacturers might jump in on this as well. Now, they do have to worry. They don't want to make it look like a phone, so they have to make it look PC-ish. But yeah, there's a lot of opportunity here for manufacturers to get really creative, and that is exciting. All right, let's turn to things I don't like. So number one, performance. I know, it sounds contradictory. Now, if you go outside of the store for our apps or games, well, this is not gonna be very good. For those who are developers who wanna run Visual Studio or Photoshop, or you wanna do video editing, this is not gonna be your device. Windows 10 and ARM probably won't be like that for a very long time. Don't forget, this is meant for light computing. So if you're looking for something to replace your main laptop or PC, well, this is not gonna be that device. Think of this more as an iPad and how a lot of people use that in conjunction with a PC, and you kind of get the idea of where this device fits in. All right, number two, things I don't like. It's messaging, and I don't mean messaging apps. I mean, how are they going to sell this? So there is a lot of confusing stuff with Windows 10 on R versus Windows 10 on PC. Sure, it's the same OS, and you can mostly run the same apps, but that's where it gets confusing. X86, X64, Win32, emulation, native. All this is super confusing. Even I don't fully grasp it, especially since now there's a new SDK that's coming out that allows developers to recompile their apps for X64 and ARM. And that's just a lot for any consumer to swallow. So for the most part, if you're looking for a light computing device, this will do well. But if you start to go outside of that, it's going to get a little confusing. How Microsoft and its partners sell it to consumers, I think is going to be very tricky. 
and that's a tight rope to walk, but we'll have to see how they manage it. And finally, number three is gaming. This is not a gaming device, and if you're looking to game on it, well, look elsewhere. Now, that seems a little unfair. I just jumped on performance a little bit about this, but don't forget, the iPad Pro is a really good gaming device considering what it can do. Now, I realize some of those are mobile games, but graphically, it does a lot, and this is not there yet. Now, maybe that will improve someday, but if you're looking to play any kind of PC games that's way above the medium level, you're going to be in for a major disappointment here. So I'd love to see gaming improve, but I don't see that happening anytime soon, and that's gonna be a sore spot for, I think, a lot of people. All right, so that wraps it up for the seven things I like and three things I don't like about Windows 10 on ARM. Now, I didn't mention pricing. There's a specific reason for that. The NVX2 is $1,000, but I actually think it's justified by the quality of the hardware here. And don't forget, things like the Asus Nova Go go for around $799. It could probably even go lower than that, though we'll start to compromise on the quality of the components. The NVX2 is meant to compete with the iPad Pro, and in that sense, it's kind of a bargain. And don't forget, price is relative, and pricing will be shifting all over the place. There's a lot of opportunity here for PCs, so I really don't want to ding that yet for this device, so long as you know what you're buying. Now, if you think I missed anything in this video, leave me a comment below, or if you have a question about Windows 10 or ARM, don't forget to ask that as well, and I'll try to answer it. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, and if you're new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.